What's up guys, I'm Lucy Martin and today we are talking about how you can move from auto to manual mode on your camera and the basic settings that you can use to do that. And by basic, I mean like really, really basic. Like so basic, it's more basic than an Instagram girl at a music festival wearing a crop top and hippie dress and doing the peace sign. Oh man, that's, that's actually me. Yeah, throw up the picture, just, yep, yep. I'm basic guys, like forewarning. There is some basicness up in here. All right, so now that we've covered just how basic this tutorial is gonna be, let's jump in. When you first start using manual mode on your camera, there's really just three things that you need to keep in mind, and that's ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Those three elements work together to give you the overall exposure of your image, which is why some people refer to it as the exposure triangle. I'm gonna start with ISO because I think that it's actually the easiest to understand. ISO is basically your camera's sensitivity to light and it's measured on a scale from around 50 to sometimes up to 32,000. And generally, the lower your ISO, the darker your image is gonna be and the higher your ISO, the brighter the image will be. So you would normally think, great, when I need more light, I can just pump up that ISO, bring in more light and get the picture I want. But it doesn't actually always work like that because there is a trade-off with a higher ISO number and that is noise and grain in your photos. As a general rule of thumb, I like to keep my ISO as low as possible. Under a thousand is great. Now, if you wanna find out how high you can pump the ISO on your camera, I would suggest that you go out and take a bunch of photos going up stop by stop and then import those into your computer, take a look and figure out at which point the grain is just too much and unacceptable for you. It's different for everyone, so do that, take a look at the photos, and then you'll know that max number that you never wanna cross. Next up is aperture, and this really measures your camera's depth of field. So essentially, the lower the number, the wider your lens is open, which means a lot more light is getting in, and your depth of field is very shallow. And the higher the number, the less light gets in, and the more focus range that you have. Aperture is measured in f-stop, so a very high f-stop like 22 would look something like this. See how it's very narrow and closed? And that would be a 1.5, it's very open. So a low f-stop of say 1.5 would mean that you have a very shallow depth of field. So your subject would be in perfect focus, but the background would be completely blurry, which you see a lot in portraits. Now, a really high f-stop would mean that everything in your photo would be in focus from what's ever in the foreground to the background, and you see that a lot on landscape shots. Now, the important thing to keep in mind about aperture is that it affects your image's depth of field, but it also affects how much light comes into the camera. So a wide aperture of 1.5 would mean that a lot of light is getting into your camera, the image is gonna be brighter. But an f-stop of 11 means that that opening is closed up a bit and there's gonna be less light getting in. All right, moving on to shutter speed. Shutter speed is about how long the lens is left open to let light into the camera and onto the sensor. So I find when people have issues with their image being kind of blurry when they know the focus is on and the aperture is where they want and they just can't figure out like, why doesn't it just look super crisp? It comes down to shutter speed and that your shutter is too slow. So if your model moves even just a little bit or you have a bit of camera shake when you're holding the camera, all of a sudden you just have a little bit of motion blur in there. So shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. You can have 1 50th, 1 100th, 1 200th, 1 1,000th, one, that's hard to say, 1 1,000th, 1 1 1,000th, yeah, 1 1,000th. So it depends what you're shooting, but to be safe, I usually keep my shutter speed above 1 200th of a second, because I feel at that speed, if a model just moves a little bit or is mid smile or anything like that, I still capture it. So if you're doing action sports photography, you're gonna wanna have a shutter speed of probably like one over a thousand, but if you're doing more headshots and laid back things like that, probably one over 200, one over 250 is good. Now shutter speed also has an effect on the brightness of your photo. So a very high shutter speed, where the shutters just open and close really fast to capture that frozen moment, it doesn't let in a lot of light. All right, so that was a basic intro to ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. The one thing that I really want you to keep in mind when you go out and experiment with these is that they all impact exposure. So if all of these affect exposure, 
Where do you even start? My advice would be to start with Aperture. Decide if you want to have just your subject in focus or if you want everything in focus. Set that first and then go from there. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful and that you have a better understanding of ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a like, that would mean a lot to me. Subscribe with the big red button if you're not already. Feel free to leave me a comment down below too and I will definitely get back to you. Until next time, stay awesome.